Phoenix here. The NVIDIA CEO has sold $120 million worth of shares in the last like 10 days. And this is not going to be a hater video, so don't think, okay, Felix loads NVIDIA. No, I want to show you the facts, the figures, the sources, so you can come to your own conclusion and we're going to walk through it. I haven't made up my mind on this, but we'll do it together. Before we get into that, and here is the list of his sell-offs, pretty significant numbers there. I'm going to run and give away my entire trading strategy. Now, we are up 93% so far this year. I think it might even be 95. And I'll teach it to you completely for free so you can know the strategy, you can know what Wall Street does, you can know what hedge funds do, which is a little bit the world where I come from. Just go to Phoenix Runs like such webinar and sign up. Grab one of those 500 spots we have available and join me and learn. That's really what I'd say to you. That's what the whole community is about. We want to bring a million people financial freedom. That's my that's my slightly crazy goal. So what's been going on here? Well, we've got these massive sales here, 42 million, 26 million, 26 million, 13 million. This is all Dr. Jensen Huang, and that adds up to something like 100, what is that, 40, 60, 80, 90, about 100, about 108 million, something like that. I think there was another sale just before that. So that's quite a lot, right? Why is the CEO selling that much? Well, let's talk this through and go past my, my glory here. This is just to put this into perspective. The chart of all insider sales for NVIDIA starting in 2020. And what you can see is that the cluster over here and over there is getting thicker, right? There are more sales now than there have been in the past. And that makes me a little bit suspicious and it makes me want to dig a little deeper. So let's dig deeper. Has he really sold? You're thinking, Felix, you just showed me he sold 108 million plus. Well, yes. But what you want to ask yourself is how much, what percentage? That's, that's good English, isn't it? How percentage? What percentage does he, the chosen one, the CEO, own? Is that declining or is it staying the same? And for me, that's a number I would look at. So let's go back to the data and have a look at how much he holds in the business. Can you see that? Let me make it as big as possible. So we start off with 3.5%. Here he sells 3.5%. We go to 3.5%, we go to 3.5%, we go up to 3.8%, 3.8%, he sells again, we go back down to 3.5%, and right now it's 3.51%, and I think there's another sell coming. Now, something really, really to look at with these totals is that, and this will blow your mind, the first number, the smaller number, is what he pays. So he pays $356,255 and he gets back when he sells the shares. He just got, a, got exercised as share options. So that's what I should explain. So he pays $356,000 for share options, essentially. How much, what's the profit he's making? I've got my phone out there as a calculator. Well, we can do it together, can't we? So dollars divided by $356,255,000, that's 120x. Jensen Huang is making 120x on his share options. 120x, that's insane, right? But, and this is really in fairness to the man, he is not reducing his overall stake in NVIDIA. He's just taking his CEO pay and he's pocketing it. He's buying yachts and houses and, you know, paying mistress number 29. I, I don't know. I don't know the man. Apparently, he's a very kind, down-to-earth sort of a chap. But, so you can say, okay, he's selling. Is it good or bad? It's never good when CEOs sell, but he's selling, but he's not really reducing his stake. It's a lovely Peter Lynch quote here. Insiders might sell their shares for any number of reasons. Tax, need to buy the fourth house, pay for the fifth divorce, you know, buy a bigger yacht to keep up with the Joneses but they buy them for only one. They think the price will rise. And that's very, very true. If you're the CEO of a company and you think this stock is the best investment opportunity out there, you're not selling. 
if you can help it. You might sell a little bit to pay for the tax bill and you know the ninth Ferrari or something, but you're fundamentally keeping your money in there. I don't think Jensen Huang got a $120 million tax bill. Do you? I don't think so. So he's selling for a reason. He wants to diversify or whatever, right? It's like when Bill Gates did it to Microsoft and whenever that was. And there's a little bit more to it that I want to, want to look at. Uh, Core Weave, which apparently I can't spell. I want to look at that. I want to look how we can make money out of this. How can we trade this? Is this bullish or bearish? So there's this article out saying that Core Weave has seven data centers. And then there are people claiming that the pitch book says they have zero data centers, and the pitch book is from September 14th. Now, CoreWeave is a company that's just bought $2 billion of NVIDIA H100 chips that is essentially financed, well, sort of by NVIDIA, and that some people, including myself, are saying looks like they're pulling forward demand. They're kind of inflating the present demand, and we're therefore more worried about the future demand. What's the truth? Well, I would say the truth is probably that... They do have data centers, but they're rented or they're rather outsourced. And that in itself is not a thing that I'm against. I quite like companies outsourcing. It makes a heck of a lot of sense. So basically, there is probably a data center operator in New Jersey and you go in there and you go, well, here are our servers and our $2.3 billion worth of 45,000 H100 chips. Can you plug them in? And then you'll run this building and guard it and you'll do all sorts of stuff and we'll send our staff in uh, because they do seem to be hiring at least engineers so that's probably the real truth so it's probably it's not black or white but it isn't quite as it is portrayed in public or in their pitch decks now why am i rambling on about nvidia because i worry about investors i worry about people who buying this at the top because the estimate from analysts for NVIDIA is that they're going to have in 2026 to 2020, sorry, in 2024 to 2026, they're going to bring in a revenue in total of $226 billion, which is almost 50% more than they've built, brought in in the last 25 years. Those are really lofty expectations. I mean, I'm saying like, Sky's the limit expectations. This is the expectation. This is the bottom line. This is what everyone expects. You bring in 1 billion less and the stock goes down. So you see what I'm saying? It's just like, this is a really tall order. And therefore, it makes it very, very risky, I, I would say. And I've mentioned this before in other videos. There is a law of new tech. And the law is very, very simple. The law is, and this is the stock market with new tech. Too excited. Can you see that? You're a bit over. Too excited too early. And then miserable on the new tech for too long. So what happens is that in reality, it takes longer for new technology to bring the benefits in the real world and therefore generate the lasting growth and revenue for NVIDIA than people right now expect. But the benefits that actually come down the road are typically underestimated. So I'm not bearish on NVIDIA. I think it's an amazing company, amazing product and all of that. I just think that the expectations up here right now, this is now, are too high. And then we're going to fall into this bit here where everyone's going to be sad and miserable and angry about the stock. And that's also too low. And that's when you want to buy, right? So that's when I buy tech. When it's been proven, the excitement's over and it's really boring and no, no one likes it anymore. And then we go up more than people expect. And I don't mind at all missing out on this little journey up because that was just pure excitement. And I don't have FOMO anymore. I've been there. I've done that. I've got the FOMO out of my system. I just want to make money. And to make money, I know I must protect my capital above everything else. So I can miss out on the greatest profit opportunity in the world as long as I am keeping my stash intact so I can trade another day. So how do we trade it? Well, this is what the stock chart looks like. And 
the first thing I always look at is where's the 50-day moving average line? This is the 50-day, it's called an SMA, 50-day uh, simple moving average line. And at the moment, we are trading well below it. And that's not a good thing. So that's bad. But really, I then look at where is the most recent low, and the real low sits here at $400. And I can also tell you that's where the options market supports it. So if you break through $400, I think it's time to be temporarily bearish on the stock. If we don't, it might just bob sideways, just like we did over here, and then we go back up. So there is two ways of trading this, right? Let me show it to you. You go to optionswatch.io, you type NVIDIA in here, or NVIDIA, it doesn't matter, you click on it. And first of all, you want to register, this is options, IV is really low. It's not a brilliant thing to trade. It's just a little bit too low. So what can you do? Well, you could be bullish on this and say, look, say by October 20th, it's the next monthly options expiration. Um, you know, I think it's going to stay above $400 because that's where the support sits and you set up something like this. It has a 77%. Let me make this window a little bit bigger, smaller so you can properly see it. This has a 77% probability of making us money. We're selling a $400 put. We're buying a 390 put to hedge ourselves. And it could make you 24% return. Right? It's not a, not a trade recommendation. It's not financial advice. That'd be one way of looking at it. Going, okay, I just think we're not going to go that much lower than the previous low at 402. And therefore, that's a safe play. Nothing is safe, by the way. But that's the idea. Or you could say, well, I just think temporarily, we're going to be under attack. So we can have a break even at 480. That has 13% profit. That's probably a little bit too little. So we need to go to 470. That makes more sense. So the stock could go down or it could go from its current share price of 435 back up to 470. And that's something that people often find confusing um, because when you buy a stock, how can you make money in both directions? I like to make money in both directions. It makes the trade much, 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 much more probable to work out in my favor. So what I do is, and I'm not doing this trade, but you know, we're trading here. So you make money if you go up and your limit is 470 or 72 actually, or you could go all the way down to zero. It doesn't really matter. And if you do that and you stay in that range, then you would make a 29% return by October 20th, which is not a bad setup. But don't do this trade. If you don't fully understand it, get a paper trading account. Think of Swim as a brilliant one or interactive brokers. And if you want to really understand this, how this, this glorious room for error, right? This is my margin of safety. This is my safety margin. That's what makes me money because I can be wrong and I can make money. Right? I can be wrong by $37, which is quite a lot. That's like a 9%. I could be wrong by 9% on the stock. I think it's going to go down, but it might go up 9%. I'm still good. That's what makes me money. That's how I get to my results. So if you want to learn how that, how that works, sign up for the webinar, felixrenzelog slash webinar. I'd love to see you there. It's live. You get my full, full access to everything I do. I explain it to you. I give you a workbook and we'll do some trading together so you can see me put it into practice. So it's theory, strategy, and implementation all in one. So you guys get some real value out of it. Thank you for watching. Thanks for smashing the subscribe button. And if you haven't watched my original sort of takedown on NVIDIA, I'd encourage you to watch it. And you might disagree with it, but I'm somebody, I don't get married to my stocks. I like to know the facts and I like to see both sides of the argument, the people who hate it, the people who love it. So if you love NVIDIA, watch it and you might come out of it and go, maybe he has a point, but I disagree with it and you're all good. But at least you know what I'm talking about. So I'm going to link to it right here.